All right, so let's look at our final discussion topic in class, which was looking at trusses. Um, so I've got an Excel sheet opened up. There's a lot going on here on this uh, sheet, so I'll, I'll sort of summarize a couple things. So first off, I went ahead and included the formulas for the local stiffness matrix for a truss element, as well as the transformation matrix. Um, I also have the truss that we were looking at in our uh, example in class. And what we were going to do is compute the global stiffness matrices for two of the members in the truss. We were going to look at the diagonal, and then we were going to look at the member up top, the uh, N3, N4, the horizontal one. We didn't get to that one in time, uh, and I kind of want to go through sort of everything with the problem. We pretty much set everything up for the diagonal at the end of class last time, but I wanted to just make sure that we had done everything that was necessary. So um, let's look at the diagonal. So I've got a couple of things on here uh, that weren't in the, uh, um, on the slide, but uh, we had sort of drawn together in class and kind of discussed. First off, the member codes. Uh, that's this uh, right here. Again, not, it, it's not really necessary for this problem, but it's just so that you understand the larger picture with this truss. This truss would, or this uh, system, would ultimately be comprised of an 8 by 8 matrix, uh, and then we would knock out uh, three of the rows and columns, so we knock out rows and columns five and six because there's a pin at joint three. And then for the roller support, degree of freedom one is restrained, but not degree of freedom two. Like the, at joint one, the roller can move up, like that, that joint can move up and down, it just can't move to the left or right. So we would eliminate columns, one, columns and rows one, five, and six uh, for the system. But again, not really necessary for this problem. We're just trying to write the global stiffness matrix for that member. So let's take the member. So we're talking about element uh, N2, N, uh, N3. Okay, so we know the E value is uh, 29,000. Uh, we know the area of the diagonal is 1.5. Uh, and now in order to determine the um, the, the length, one of the things I had introduced in class was sort of a change in X and a change in Y. So um, what I'll do for this is um, I'll say X, Y, and let's do a little table here. Let's do joint. And so we're going from uh, joint two, or joint two, or element number, uh, element N2 to N3. So we'll do N2, sorry, N2, N3, and let's write the X and Y coordinates, okay? So the X and Y coordinates of joint number two, and I put that over here in this image here on the right, are 72 and zero, and then for N3, uh, it's zero and 96. Now, if we want the change in X, and so maybe I'll, I'll sort of move this, I don't know, maybe like over here. Maybe I'll box that just so it's kind of clear. Okay. If we want the change in X and change in Y, typically what we do is we go higher order or higher number node minus lower number node. You don't have to go that way, but um, it's um, uh, it's worth uh, uh, just making sure that you're you're consistent. So let me you, be fancy here. You, let's use some symbols. So let's insert a delta. So delta X and a delta Y. Okay, so delta X will take the higher minus the lower, higher minus the lower. So the higher number joint minus the lower number joint. So change in X is negative 72, change in Y is positive 96. But just look at the truss. Like if I start at joint 2 and I move to joint 3, I go up in the Y, uh, along the Y axis, but I go left along the X axis. So I think that that's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, so in order to compute the length, we can take the square root of that squared plus that squared. And so it's 120 inches. Again, note that all of the, the distances and the lengths are in inches. You gotta be consistent on your units. Um, and then in terms of computing the cosine and the sine, um, maybe I'll um, insert theta there just so. Cosine and sine. Uh, in order to um, uh, in order to do, uh, uh, compute this again, we can use just the adjacent over hypotenuse and the opposite over hypotenuse because we have the hypotenuse, which is the length, and we have the legs of the triangle, which are the change in x and change in y. 
So the cosine is the change in x over the hypotenuse. The sine is the change in y over the hypotenuse. So all of the terms there are, nest, are available in order to uh, compute, our, um, uh, compute our matrices. So if we're talking about this element, let's do the k element. So k into n3. And I didn't really number the elements for this problem. I just went off the nodes. So k for n2, n3. And so that's going to be a 4 by 4. All right, and then, you know, I'm using this formula right here. So it's EA over L, so E times A over L. And then that's negative that, that's that, and that's negative. And so I'm just using this, you know, uh, form right here, and everything else is a zero. Okay, so there's that. Um, and then for the transformation matrix, so let's copy the format. So this is the transformation matrix. Uh, transformation matrix, so this is zeros. These are zeros. Uh, and then let's see what do we have. Along the main diagonal, we have the cosine. These are positive cosines, so equals the cosine, so that's C8, and then if you follow the, the pattern, so it's sine, negative sine, sine, negative sine, so equals sine, equals negative sine, equals sine, equals negative sine. Okay, and that's our transformation matrix. Now, if you want to determine the global stiffness matrix, um, let me move this down here. Get my format set up. Okay, so here's the global stiffness matrix. If you remember that in order to determine a global stiffness matrix, we take, um, we take T transpose times little k times T. So there's three matrix multiplications. So the way that you have to do this in Excel, uh, and if you want to set this up in separate regions in Excel, you can. Like if you want to do first do the transpose, you know, maybe you want to set the transpose over here. You know, say, hold on, I'll, I'll just equals transpose of that. And sort of, you know, take up a little bit more space on the sheet to ensure that you get the formula correct. That's fine. I tend to just try and lump it all in one big formula. Um, you just gotta have you have to take your time with it. Okay. Now the matrix multiplication command only works on two matrices at a time, so you have to do two matrix multiplications. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the first two, and then multiply that times the third one. So so I'll show you how this works. So we're going to do equals and mult. Of, and I'm going to multiply the first two matrices. Now the first one is the transpose of that, the, then comma, the second is that. Okay, so that's the first two, the multiplication of the transpose of T and then K. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to wrap an M mult around the whole thing and I'm going to say multiply all of that times T then control shift enter and that is your global stiffness matrix for element n2 n3 and again all that is is basically this matrix just split up into sines and cosines so if you notice the the local matrix has a value of 362.5 that's the axial stiffness and so if you break that up into sines and cosines the global matrix those values should be smaller, right? You know, if you have a hypotenuse of a triangle, the hypotenuse is the longest leg, the other legs are smaller. So the, the global stiffness matrix has more values, they're just, they're just smaller. Now, if you're interested in doing this, you don't necessarily have to, but if you want to identify the member codes, you know, we're talking about the diagonal. The diagonal goes 3, 4, 5, 6. So 3, 4, 5, 6. 
Let's go down there. So that would be the, uh, the member codes for the element level matrix. So if I was assembling this, I would assemble it in an 8x8, eight eight, and that's where those terms would go in 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so I could do this for the remaining four members and get a big old stiffness matrix for the entire system. Um, now, we also need to continue this problem and look at the, the, uh, the other members. So in this problem, if you remember, so here I'll, I'll pull the, the problem over here, but it says write the global stiffness matrices for members N2, N3, and N3, N4. So we've done N2, N3. That's, you know, here's our answer. Now we need to do N3, N4. Now what I'm going to do is I want to show you something. If you look at the element level stiffness matrix, we referenced everything off of a lot of formulas, but really there was only four indices, four values that mattered. There's the E value for the matrix, there's the area, and then the, the coordinates, the, the nodal coordinates, right? So for instance, if I change this to six, everything else updates as a result. So what I'm going to do is be a little lazy about this, and I'm actually going to copy and paste this entire set of routines that I've written. I'm going to copy and paste this all over again, and uh, let, me, let me drag, let me do this. Let me drag this down here a little bit, and let me make sure that I'm dragging this down so I can kind of see it. And so now I'm going to do the same thing for element N3, N4. And so the nice thing about this is that once you've got it set up, all you have to do is change the values, and Excel takes care of everything else. So what changes from element 3 to element 4? Well, all the members are made of steel, so the E value does not change. That remains the same. Okay, what about the area? Well, the, the um, N3, N4, that has an area of 2, right? So that changes. Now the coordinates obviously change. We're going from N3 to N4, so I need to input the coordinates N3, N4. So what are the coordinates of N3? N3 is, uh, let's see, that's 0, 96, uh, and then N4 is 72, 96. And there we go. So we're actually already done. Now the, the entire next stiffness matrix is complete. Now maybe maybe what we ought to do is change our member codes. Maybe we ought to do that too. I forgot about that. So 5, 6, 7, 8. 5, 6. Oh, did it again. 5, 6, 7, 8. So there we go. Now before we close the video, there's actually something that's kind of interesting about this. If you look at the local matrix, and you look at the global matrix, they're the same, right? That didn't happen up here. In the last problem, they were different, but in this problem, they're the same. Why are they the same? The reason is because of the orientation of the element. See, if you're talking about the N2, N3, the first member that we did, it was a diagonal element, right? So the local coordinate system and the global coordinate system were aligned along, they, there was an, an angle change, there was an orientation change. But imagine drawing a coordinate system for the entire truss, which is, you know, that's what we have right here. Now imagine drawing a coordinate system for member N3, N4. And if you think about it, you'll realize that it's actually not rotated, that the coordinate system for element N3, N4 and the coordinate system for the entire system are actually aligned. They're parallel. They're, with the, they're along the same uh, uh, orientation. So the transformation matrix actually doesn't change the element at all. It's the identity matrix because the angle is zero. And if you have a zero degree angle, the cosine is one and the sine is zero. So the transformation matrix is the identity matrix. And if you remember, whenever you multiply by the identity matrix, it doesn't change anything. And so that happens specifically with member N3, N4 because it is parallel to the x-axis, right? Now that won't happen with like a vertical member because the vertical member is rotated 90 degrees. So if you had an, uh, an angle rotation that was say 90 degrees, well let's say you have a cosine of 0 and a sine of 1. Let's say something like that. What it does is it's the same uh, terms, they're just 
flipped 90 degrees, so it's sort of like your X's become Y's and your Y's become X's. So if you look at the comparison between local and global, it's just sort of moving the terms, exchanging them to, uh, to other degrees of freedom. But by and large, that's, that's the process. That's how it works. So that's the nice thing about Excel and doing this with programs. Like once you set up the routine to do it once, it's a very loopable program. It's a very loopable process. You can just do it over and over again, and computers uh, love to do that. Uh, that's all I have for the, the, this you know, series of supplements. Hopefully this helps you with the homework assignment, and this puts a bow on the matrix analysis coverage in this class. So when you come back from break, we'll go a little bit more into some practical stuff. We'll talk about analysis aids, talk about tributary area, uh, and things like that. Hope everybody has a wonderful break, and we will see you when you return.